golden years today, chosen by, I'm delighted to say, Holly Johnson. Welcome. Thank you very much, Ken. It's lovely to see you again. It's been a few years, actually. It has, I think, since, was it Ascension <laughs> that I came to see yes, you about yeah. with Ga- oh. Gary Barlow? Or yeah. was it This Was Me? I think From, it everybody's was. Everybody's talking it, about Jamie, maybe. Could have been. There's so many things that yeah. you've been involved with. Ascension, what a great record that was. It, it was, was amazing. Loved it. Yeah. Absolutely loved it. Uh, and here you are about to launch another tour. Well, I don't do them very often, but I'm really looking forward to this one that starts off in Glasgow Pavilion on the 19th of October. Yeah. I'm um, looking forward to getting a haggis and <laughs> some tatty scones in. Well, they won't be throwing them at you, that's for sure. No, no. <laughs> well, let's hope not. <laughs> <laughs> They're a very respectful audience. Pavilion Theatre is a lovely, lovely place to work. And you've added extra dates to your tour. Well, yeah, because Liverpool um, Philharmonic Hall on... The oh the twenty first of October sold out in eight minutes, so they've added another date on Friday the tenth of November. So I have to be doing that as well as Birmingham Symphony Hall, uh, Gateshead Sage, and Brighton Dome on Thursday the sixteenth of November, which is the last one of this run. But isn't that great selling out in eight minutes? I mean that's fantastic. Well it was Liverpool. Yeah, but and still we just done uh the Eurovision Song Contest opening ceremony as Frankie Goes to Hollywood, which I think helped. Yeah, but uh, still people want to see you. Oh. Uh, and you'll be singing the, the, the solo hits as well as the Frankie hits. Oh of course. I, I was so sh- chuffed that you know it, it sold out and um yeah I will because it's 35 years since the album Blast, my debut solo album, we'll be doing a couple of album tracks off that and uh, also all the Frankie hits and Love Train, Americanos, Atomic City, all oh, of those. You've sold it to us already. Oh, Brilliant. Fantastic. Brilliant stuff. But we want you to remember your golden year for oh, us. So uh, which year have you chosen? I've chosen 1975. I was just still attending the Liverpool Collegiate Grammar School for Boys, uh, although I didn't go much after the third year, I have to say. (laughs) Uh, Naughty, uh, we're very naughty. And uh, yes, that was my golden era of fandom. T-Rex, David Bowie, you know, soul music, all kinds of pop. It was my life. I was totally passionate about it. You were completely into it. Were you able to indulge in playing or getting involved in music? Uh, well, yes, I got a guitar for uh, when I was 13 because Mark Bolan had an acoustic guitar and would sit cross-legged and sing Deborah and, you know, Ride a White Swan and all of those great songs. Uh, and then David Bowie came along with this 12-string guitar uh, and I had to try and learn Starman and the Gene Genie, and they were too difficult (laughs) for me to play, so I started writing my own songs, basically. (laughs) It was my ineptitude at the guitar that inspired me to, you know, write songs. Well, the song by Bowie you've gone for is our our theme song, as it were, Golden Years, so why have you picked that one in particular? Well, it just has such a fantastic groove to it. You know, it's perfectly tailored for... Soul Train, the American um, music program that we saw him on, on top of the pops. They somehow transferred the weird, blurry American format to uh, English. And there he was after all the Ziggy Stardust, which was my first ever concert at the Liverpool Empire. And then uh, Aladdin Sane, he sort of changed direction totally and became this soul singer with Luther Vandross doing backing vocals. And it was just an incredible album, the Young Americans album. And Golden Years as the, I think that was the lead single, wasn't it? It was just so great to dance to on the dance floor. And I remember going to the Bears Paw and, you know, with Pete Burns would be there and various other, you know, exciting Liverpool characters and, We'd all be dancing to both David Bowie and later Roxy Music. So uh, were they part of that same kind of scene? Well, there were actually Bowie and Roxy nights in certain clubs in Liverpool anyway. And, uh, you know, Roxy was another sort of glamorous creation, art school sort of concoction. 
with the fabulous Brian Eno and Brian Ferry and Phil Manzanera on guitar. Uh, and, uh, you know, they were just so exciting to watch them. And that was my second ever concert at the Liverpool Empire to see Roxy Music live. Eno had moved on by then uh, to, you know, Eno Universe. Yes. Uh, and, uh, but Brian Ferry was the full... Um, he had the glamorous girlfriend uh, that soon went over to some other band. <laughs> and uh, he was just so cool, really. And this track, when Grace Jones did it, was also fantastic. Uh, we've got you in uh, Liverpool in 1975. You're watching all these fabulous acts. Um, did you ever think, or at that stage, did you think, I'm going to be up there one day, I'm going to do this? Well, that was the dream. You, you know, it's like a young lad who wants to be a football player. I was never interested in that. I wanted to be Mark Boland, David Bowie, Brian Ferry. I wanted to be like them, you, you know. Kate Bush was another one in the 70s who was totally blown away yeah. by. I, yeah. I absolutely loved her. Uh, but making that, re that dream happen, become a reality, that's, that's more difficult. Yes, I had no idea how to go about it. I remember recording songs onto a cassette player, uh, which you could do then. I don't know if people even know what cassettes are. <laughs> Actually, Listeners I, to this station do. They yeah, are. <laughs> I'm releasing Blast on cassette. Is it coming out on cassette? As well as red vinyl in the autumn. Oh, that's good. Uh, a red cassette it'll be, so I'm looking forward to that. Perfect. The sets were great. <laughs> well, they were, weren't they? Yeah, um, you could think... record Top of the Pops off the telly, <laughs> which we all did. Which was very naughty. You shouldn't have done that, oh, but no. we'll, we'll let you away with it. Right. So, Glenn Campbell and Rhinestone Cowboy, you've asked for. Well, Glenn Campbell, what a handsome man, you know, and what a beautiful voice. Um, Wichita Lineman probably being the... Uh, more well-known song, in a way, with the same riff as uh, Bowie Starman in yeah. the chorus, that ding, 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 you know, which I absolutely loved. But he was quite a glamorous character, and uh, he was on Jules Holland only five minutes ago, and then he, he, he's gone to the yeah. Great Blue Yonder. But he was... My dad was into country, and... I, I suppose that's where I got that influence from. Right. He was a fabulously talented musician, really, he, wasn't he? He was, incredible guitarist and singer. Yeah. There's a Gloria Gaynor one coming now, so why, am I, why is that there? The, it was the dawn of the disco era. We had Donna Summer. It, it, it was played out in all the gay clubs that I was going to at the age of 15, which was probably not the best thing to do. <laughs> But there you go, I had to do it. Music was, you know, my passion. And disco was huge. You know, Saturday Night Fever, um, the Bee Gees, it, was, it exploded, really, the whole disco thing. Um, I like this particular version of it, the best, the original. And, uh, yeah, the, what a great record. Liverpool... Uh, Holly at that time was a massive music centre. In fact, it always has been, always will be. But there was, there was a huge interest and always has been a huge interest in music amongst just everybody, the general population in Liverpool. Uh, absolutely. In the 70s, we had The Real Thing with Can You Feel the Force? And, you know, they were a, a great band and very unusual, you know, a a multiracial band it, f coming from Liverpool. It had been the Mersey Beats and the Beatles and all these white guitar bands. And they were the first sort of soul thing that... Uh, came, I think they came through Opportunity Knox, that avenue, which was a proto X Factor type programme. Um, but they were great. Can You Feel the Force is my favourite, I think. And I just remember dancing to... You to me are everything, and yeah. all those records in the seventies. So that, the people forget that that happened. And that there was a Liverpool base because they were so taken up with the sixties. And you think of the sixties, and oh yeah, the Mersey sound, as you say. But in the seventies and all the years since then, there's been a big swelling of Liverpool music. 
It, it is usually guitar based, which I think that's why um, the real thing was slightly disregarded for a while because they didn't fit into that pigeonhole of guitar based Liverpool music. But, you know, they should be remembered as the, the big thing in the 70s from Liverpool. Then it became Echo and the Bunny Man yeah. and Teardrop Explodes in the later part of the 70s. Uh, but the real thing, were, you know, had proper pop success. Yeah. And in the 80s, of course, Frankie goes to Hollywood. Well, indeed, we made a bit of a flurry, <laughs> didn't we? <laughs> Especially in 1984, which... I could have chosen, but yeah. decided, you know, to go with something else. Yeah, well, that was a pretty good year, you have it to say. Was. Yes. It, well, it was for other people as well, like Prince and Wham and, you know, all those people who had their classic hits in that actual year. Another one from the 70s you've chosen, uh, from 75, and uh, you were mentioning, you know, your, your dad was big into country music. It's Tammy Wynette, Stand By Your Man. That is a fantastic record. Her voice is incredible. She was definitely the hardest working woman in show business for many years. And she was sort of resuscitated again by KLF um, later on in the 1990s. Um, I was in a band with Bill Drummond from the KLF when I was 16 in Liverpool called Big in Japan. And I feel somehow connected to Tammy through that. Yeah. Well, yes, there was a connection there. And of course, Big in Japan were a, were a huge band as well. Well, I don't think we were huge. We we were a sort of super group in reverse. <laughs> there was lots of egos there. <laughs> Ian Brody from the Lightning Seeds, Budgie from Susie and the Banshees, uh, Jane Casey who went on to be Pink Military and Pink Industry. Um, but everyone did well after Big yeah, Japan. Well, it, was, it was a great starting point, we'll it, say that. It was. Certainly. Janice Ian's song, At 17, is uh, next. That is a, it's a very, very emotional song, isn't it? It is a, an emotional song, and I discovered it from watching the old Grey Whistle Test. Uh, they featured her, and they talked about her early album, uh, Madness Comes Slowly to the Structured Mind, or some bizarre title like that and she was very young when she wrote the you know that album and it was just a very poignant song and i think it feeds into uh her feelings about being gay perhaps uh and confused in her teenage years uh she later i think came out as a gay singer songwriter and uh, it was very resonant at the time, uh, for me anyway, when I first heard that song. I think it spoke to a lot of people from different backgrounds and experiences. Uh, absolutely. That awkward time we had at teenage, you know, in our teenage years. Yeah. Now, Holly, we must talk about the uh, tour again. It's, it's happening. The tickets are, are on sale now. Tickets are out now. So uh, those who haven't managed to get there their tickets already, they better hurry up, I think. Well, actually, you can go to hollyjohnson.com and register for emails and get a special pre-sale link, which they're available today, I think, and Friday uh, on general sale. Right. Um, and, you know, our fingers are crossed, our legs are crossed, uh, that we'll all have a great time come the autumn. Well, you, as always, will throw everything at it, won't you? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> you don't hold back <laughs> when it comes to performance. No. But uh, the, the love is out there, and people, when they see you uh, on stage in all these uh, venues, you're going to have a fabulous time. I, I certainly hope so. Great. Holly, it's lovely to see you. Thank you for choosing your golden year for us, and uh, huge success with the tour. Thank you very much, Ken.